Shout out to our sponsor, Blue Apron. For less than $10 per meal, Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes with ingredients and step-by-step -step instructions that make cooking easy. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping when you visit blueapron.com slash the new. Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley Jenkins. And I'm Gus Sorolla. Breaking news, we've got a confirmation for Half-Life 3. I mean, it's, it's, it's confirmation that it might have been an RTS game once upon a time, but that's still a confirmation. It's a clickbaity confirmation. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yes, sadly, Half-Life 3 remains that vaporware of vaporware games, but we've got an interesting glimpse into what forms the game might have taken back when people were still actually working on Half-Life 3. On a recent Game Informer podcast, executive editor Andrew Reiner shared details about his quest to find out whatever happened to the long-rumored game. It turns out there were a lot of different teams working on prototypes of the third Half-Life and their ideas for what the game might look like spanned a lot of different genres from real-time strategy to like a live action FMV. What? Yeah, I don't know. Look, this is making a big comeback. I mean, technically I think her story is an FMV game, so. Oh. That's true. It would have just been that. It's a great game. In trying to figure out what became of Half-Life 3, Reiner said he talked to a developer who told him the game was a hot mess. That, that Apparently he talked to this developer 10 years ago. I like, guess so. Yeah. I wonder if there's a hella in there. A hella hot mess. There were so many different prototypes that there were small teams, four or five people working on them, that just never got off the ground, Reiner said on the podcast. And here's where it gets more interesting. Of those different prototypes, one was reportedly going to be an RTS game, he said. The other one involved live actors and it was going to be a new kind of adventure action game with actual actors. Apparently they were working on these things. I loved FMV games back in the day. I mean, did you play um, Zork Grand Inquisitor? That was FMV. I did not play that one. Never forget! Who is the boss of you? Me! I am the boss of you! Uh, so both of those would have been a radical departure for Half-Life, however radical they may have been. And I think radical is probably the era appropriate term to use for that. I can't even imagine it as an RTS game. I mean, well, I think a radical departure for Half-Life would just be working on Half-Life 3. I think if, if they were working on the game at all, that's a radical departure. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, the idea to use live actors would have been reminiscent of Night Trap, the infamous interactive movie game for the Sega CD back in 92. But Reiner said that Half-Life version would have been much more advanced. Course, but duh. would it have been as sexy? I mean, wasn't that one of the games that led to the ESRB? Yep. It was like that and Mortal Kombat. Yep. So, come on, man. A lot to live up to. Of course, it's been almost 10 years since the release of Half-Life 2 Episode 2, and that game ended in one hell of a cliffhanger with Gordon Freeman and Alex Vance about to go find the research ship that could hold the key to stopping the game's alien threat, but then the two, along with Alex's father Eli, are attacked by slug-like advisors that then kill Eli and... That's where the game ends. Spoiler for 10 year old game there. Yeah, it doesn't count anymore. Uh, that, would, thing. that would seem to indicate a follow up, right? Since then, Half-Life Half 3 has been one of the gaming's greatest mysteries. Valve founder Gabe Newell initially talked about its development, but he and the rest of Valve have been radio silent about the topic for years now. Yeah, Reiner said that he had a ton of difficulty getting anyone to even talk about the game, saying it just ended up being dead end after dead end after dead end after dead end for this story. One source even told him that he was chasing unicorns. I hear that was a prototype for a version of Half-Life 3. They had a this, team of four people working on chasing we're working unicorns. We're working on chasing yeah. unicorns. Ah, uh, but you know, then again, He's not really wrong. Not really. All of the Game Informer editors on the podcast pretty much agreed that the game, not gonna happen. There has been obviously a ton written about the future of Half-Life 3. Even here at The Know, we predicted in 2015 that the game would never be released. Our presumption back then was that Valve was making too much money from Steam sales and free-to-play games like Dota 2, and there just wasn't any financial incentive to release Half-Life 3. That certainly hasn't changed. The fact is, Valve is making huge amounts of money just from distributing other people's games. Steam Spy reported that Steam's shares of the PC market was $3.5 billion in 2016. It's about the same as 2015, and while it didn't increase, it's still a lot of money. More than any one game would ever rake in, even if that game was Half-Life 3. Well, maybe not. If it, maybe if it was like GTA. GTA 5 might have. Didn't GTA 5, like, that made like a billion dollars in its first 24, 48 mm, hours. With all their microtransactions and DLC. Yeah, that one just keeps on going. Yeah. Uh, plus, no secret, the gamers can be awfully vicious if they don't like something. And for, for example, the backlash to the ending of Mass Effect 3 over what some people saw as a subpar game had a huge effect on Valve. Officials there 
may have ultimately decided that it's not worth putting the time required to make Half-Life 3, only to then see the internet inevitably shit on it. Uh, still, as reported, at one point in 2009, Half-Life 3 was well in development with a staff of 100, but that dwindled as Valve shifted resources to other games that needed more immediate help. The sad thing is, at the end of the day, video games are, as much as we all love them from a personal standpoint, a business. And at this point, Valve doesn't need Half-Life 3 for business anymore. But that hasn't stopped fans from keeping hope alive. Yeah, and Valve's first ever Steam Awards last year, lots of fans nominated Half-Life 2 Episode 2 for Game That Deserves a Sequel Award. It was a made-up award, but tons of Reddit users banded together to try to get Valve to pay attention to the fact that there are still a lot of people who want to see Half-Life 3 happen, as if Valve didn't, yeah, they didn't know that. Know. Uh, and then last year, a couple of German companies paid good money to hang a banner that said Half-Life 3 outside the convention center where Gamescom 2016 was held. It was just a joke though. A painful, hilarious, painful, funny joke. Yeah, but mostly on the painful side. It's not just fans who want to see Half-Life 3 happen though. Uh, even Neil Druckmann, who directed Uncharted 4 and The Last of Us, expressed interest in making a Half-Life game. Back in 2015, he tweeted, Look Valve, all I'm saying is you give us the Half-Life license and we'll take care of the rest. Right. He then added a winky emoji, which I think is legally That's how you know he's serious. Yeah, it's like an executed contract. Half-Life 3 confirmed. So next time you make a winky face, just know what you're actually getting yourself into. <laughs> Who are kidding? Still, Neil Druckmann directing a Half-Life game would be fucking amazing. Just give it to him, Valve. I mean, Why not? At this point, Half-Life is like a toy you're not playing with and probably forgot even, even exists. You can make money with it by licensing it out. Then if, it, if it's bad, you blame someone else. Exactly. Do you think Half-Life 3 will ever come out? Would you play it if it did, even if it was an RTS or FMV game? Let us know in the comments. And for all your Half-Life 3 rumors and gossip, be sure to like this video and subscribe to The No. If it the turns out Neil Druckmann no. is actually directing it. Like that's oh like, my God. like that he's been working on it I all would, this time. I would puddle right here. Thanks to Blue Apron for sponsoring this update. Blue Apron helps you become a wonder kind in the kitchen. They offer new recipes for you to try every week with no weekly commitment, so you get deliveries when you want them. Every meal comes with step-by-step -step recipe card and all the highest quality ingredients you need to make your meal in 40 minutes or less. You, and you feel really good about it. Feel great. You can check out this week's menu and get your first three meals for free with free shipping when you visit blueapron.com slash the no. I like cooking. Actually, it's a nice group activity. I like cooking with people. I don't. I like kick everyone out of the kitchen. Well, then I can blame them if anything goes wrong. Get out. <laughs>